Right, well, the fox I'm after this morning, I've seen a few mornings now um, coming across this, uh, this little sort of fence line just in front of me here um, and also into the other end of the wood just next to me. So uh, I've come out this morning to have a little sit and wait and see if I can bump into him. I've bought the 260 Remington with me this morning because it's, as you can see, quite open ground and it gives me the ability to stretch out that a little bit further with confidence. And also you'll notice that the uh, nettles and that are very high on this bank and it's a very awkward kind of place to get a, a shot from. So I've uh, brought the recon tripod with me, just give me that bit of extra height and stability. So hopefully he'll come along this morning and um, I'll be able to, uh, to get it. It's important to control the foxes on here all year round really, it's a working sheep farm so we've just finished lambing and there's also a game shoot on here so it won't be all that long before the pheasant parts will be coming along and that'll be the next concern but there's also quite a good sort of stock of wild birds on here as well which we're trying to kind of um, conserve as much as possible. Right, I'm going to shut up now and um, sit and wait for this fox. It's always nice to see a few hares about, another good reason to control the foxes. Right, I've been here an hour now and to be quite honest I'm starting to get a little bit uh, concerned that this fox isn't going to put in appearance this morning. Usually whenever I've seen it before I've seen it kind of uh, just after first light so fingers crossed well, this fox needs to check his pocket watch because he's definitely running late just goes to show if there's one thing that's predictable about foxes is that they're unpredictable. Well this fox hasn't put in appearance so I think I'm going to have to come back a bit later this evening and have a go at that but um, now that I'm here and I'm armed I'd better shoot something. Um, <laughs> there's a few crows out actually on this bank here and crows are always a, uh, a pain in any on any sheep farm. Um, so I think I'll have a pop at one of them. Right, so there's one a little bit closer here, it's out of 215 metres, so that's about 235 yards. Um, so let's have a look at that. So 215, there's only one and a half MOA on the elevation, and I'm going to put in one. Nice. One crow down. Well, I actually felt pretty confident that I would uh, get that fox this morning, but 
there you go that's foxing for you but um, typically as everything in life I've left it all to the last minute putting this video together so uh, despite my three o'clock start this morning I've come back out this evening to uh, have a little look around and see if I can find a fox uh, on this farm it's a different bit of ground this but um, there's been one or two foxes about and there's also been one or two roebucks about as well so hopefully I'll uh, sort of be in with a, a chance of a roe or a fox but um, either way I've brought down the Mauser M12 with me it's a 243 so it covers me for both scenarios I've got a par 007 on the back there just um, for filming purposes for up until up until dark obviously if we're going for deer uh, and then I've also got the TH50 thermal scope with me so I can um, swap that over. Both scopes are using the Sportsmatch one piece quick release mounts so they hold zero so it's, it takes seconds just to whip that off and put the other scope on there. So um, yeah, got an Element Nexus on there, no sorry not Nexus, we've got an Element Helix HDLR on there at the minute. Um, I normally use a Nexus on my 260 so it's on the tip of my tongue but yeah nice little scope this proper little compact hunting scope and uh, yeah well hopefully we'll find something and you'll actually get a look see through the scope using this and see what they're like right anyway enough of me waffling let's have a wander around and see if we can bump into something see most of these fields around here have been planted out with maize for the cattle and um, before long this stuff just rockets up and you won't be able to see a fox for loving all money. We've got a few weeks but then it'll be too tall so I need to make the most of the opportunity now. There was a fox round here, and there's actually a uh, fox cat just here on the track. So that's a good sign. They're obviously about this time of year as well. It needs to be on the eye out for for earths and cubs because they'll be starting to um, to get about now as well. So quite possibly it'll be an earth in this uh, in this long grass here, along here in this hedgerow. They're pretty well hidden, so could be. And I'll say I'll come back this way a bit later after dark, and uh, if there is anything along here, then we might hear something or uh, see some movement. Right. been pretty windy all uh, all day today this morning was pretty bad but it's picked up again this evening so it doesn't make sitting out in a high seat like this particularly pleasant it's not too bad at the minute but it keeps gusting so uh, hopefully it's not messing around with the audio levels on the camera too badly but anyway this is quite a good field it's been cut recently as you can see but you normally get one or two foxes come across here I'm hoping because it's cut they quite often like to get on a on a field that's been freshly cut I'm hoping just as it starts to get dark or just after dark we might get a visitor uh, but also you get quite a few deer come through here normally fallow deer they go to and fro across this field to the wood over the back there and one behind me although you do get a few row here and there in fact our uh, video director Emily she come up here with us one evening and or one morning I forget which it was now morning I think and uh, shot her first row buck up here the hedge just behind me here so uh, yeah, you get one or two come through here. So we hang about and see what happens. Just 
got a fleeting glimpse of a fox there just at the bottom of the field, but he's gone back into the wood. But uh, he's, um, well, that wood's about 250 yards away, if not a bit more, so it's quite a long, long stretch, especially with this wind blowing the way it is. It's a pretty, uh, pretty strong wind. I'll give it a little bit longer, and I think I'll, uh, if not, I'm going to move down and have a little walk about, try and get out of this wind a little bit, because it's not very pleasant. Well, that was pretty typical. Obviously, as you can see, it's dark now, but I've just got out of the high seat, come walking down the hedgerow there, and I got to the bottom of the field, and there was at least one, maybe two, probably, I think they were roe deer, maybe fallow, but I'm pretty sure they were a couple of roe deer in the hedge at the bottom of that field. So probably they would have come out, but um, it was too dark by then anyway. So that's just, that's just how it goes. Not a lot, not having a lot of luck today, but um, I shall persevere. just tried to get onto another fox there that was out just by that hedgerow there but unfortunately from where I was stood and where he was stood there's a house in the background there um, and some caravans and bits and pieces uh, there's also a road that runs down through there so it wasn't a safe shot I couldn't shoot it where it was and yeah basically the way it's gone and where I am and <laughs> there's no way of me to kind of work my way around it to get a safe shot because there's another road down the bottom there and more houses so he's basically just gone straight in that direction so I'm going to have to let that one wander off he was about 200, 200 uh, metres anyway last time I saw him just disappearing around the corner of the cover there so I think what I'll do is I'll go back to the truck and I'll swap the scope over I'll stick the thermal scope on there and um, come back out and have another little wander around Right, well that's the scope swapped over, quick as that. So I'm confident they hold zero, so I'm gonna go straight out and have a look for a fox. two foxes coming down across this field.
Hey! Hey! There was two foxes come across that field there. One was a bit closer than the other one. The closest one was about 110, 120 yards. And um, I just managed to just give him a shout and stopped him. And then he stopped for a second and he started walking again. So I stopped him again with another shout. He stopped, looked round. And I just shot him and he, he dropped straight into the grass. The other one just pegged it across the field. Right. Well, we could go and pick that up. But um, I think that's going to be it for this evening because uh, I really do need to get some sleep. So I hope you've enjoyed the episode anyway. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.